stay my blade from the flesh of the innocent. Hide in plain sight. Never compromise the Assassin Brotherhood. These are the tenets of the Creed. The principles I used to live by. I was a young man then. The Seven Years' War was about to begin. I could not have imagined what the future had in store for me. Nor the cost I would choose to bear. My name is Shay Patrick Cormac. This is my story. Well, you won't lack for firewood at least. <laughs> Admit it. I nearly had you. <laughs> nearly counts for nothing, Shay. And besides, no. That was just luck. <laughs> I make my own luck, Liam. Ah, you've been saying that for years, but you're precious little to show for it. Or have you been spending it all getting out of trouble? Well, you know, trouble just follows me around. Let's head back. Come on. Captain Deliver André and his crew must have run into some trouble. Who knew meeting with smugglers would lead to no good? I still don't understand why you can't tell me what we're doing here. Because Chevalier decided not to tell me. I thought we were friends, Liam. We are. Am I going too fast for you? I'm just keeping an eye on you, in case you fall down and hurt yourself. Fortune's favor. Hurry. We best not keep Chevalier waiting. Where the hell were you two? 
We're out hunting. What happened here? My men were attacked by some English sea dogs. Why, Captain Joseph, couldn't you fight them all off by yourself like you're always saying? It is Capitaine Louis-Joseph Gauthier, Chevalier de la Vérandrie. And you are dreaming if you think any training could make you into a proper assassin. Do you even know what that means? It means being responsible for an ancient and proud tradition. It means obeying your mentor without question. How else will we ensure freedom for the human race? Those pretty words, Chevalier. But I don't feel too free at the moment. Well then, feel educated! You simpleton! You rot-brained cabbage farmer! You irresponsible wretch! You simpleton! You rot-brained cabbage farmer! How dare you show me such disrespect! Gentlemen, stop! We got a common enemy, and I reckon he's close! The Royal Navy attack my vessel and force my men to flee! We are stranded, and what is worse, the smugglers we were supposed to meet have been taken prisoner! Shay and I are free, those smugglers. You, treat your wounded! Take these. You'll need them. Tread with care, Shay. The Royal Navy be ready for us. Remember your training. Ready to teach him a lesson? They don't stand a chance. Where are Not your mates bad. now, you bilge rat? Talk before I bash out your brain! Keep an eye out, lads! Their pals are still out there somewhere! Those again. Thank you. Stop there! Many thanks. I thought I'd be hanged. Happy hunting, lads! Set her ablaze! Sink that French vessel! No match for you!
Don't just stand there like you're waiting to take it. It's coming be useful. We're saving those fellas for you. Very thoughtful. Maybe you were not completely useless, Sheik. I'm thinking of useless. Those blockheads won't be needing this vessel anymore. This pile of mail? You want her, Shay? She is yours. Now bring me back to my ship. You heard, Chevalier? This vessel is yours, Shay. Go on. Take the wheel. Some of the men you rescued agreed to join us. They should prove a good crew. I'm not so certain about their captain, but next to me you are the most experienced sailor in the Brotherhood chain. Besides, we could use another vessel, even this pitiful one. She's mine, ain't she? My own ship. Your own pile of garbage, yes. Ah, with a lick of paint and a few new cannons, she'll look as fine as anything on the Seven Seas. Shall we begin, Captain? Indeed, man. Wait. Oh, Connor. She's a mess. But she's still afloat. And her name's the Morgan. Morgan? That silly fairy queen who ruined Merlin, the wise? Oh, she's perfect for you, Shane. The Morgan was an old goddess. Queen of war and darkness. She halves of the souls of fallen warriors. Perfect indeed. A ship! Shit! Shit! They will sink her! Let's put the Morrigan to the test, Captain Shay. Ready for battle, men! already after all. I will return to what is left of the ghetto. It's a long way home, and we have repairs to do. Sing hearty, lads. Chevalier is pleased with us. What course would you have me set, Shay? Time to report back to the mentor. Wouldn't you agree? Wise words, Captain. Wise words. What the hell did you do? It's... some kind of dormant virus? Emergency Shit! Hang on, I'm getting you out of there. Please proceed calmly 
Sorry for the rough exit. Your piece working, check. You were just an anonymous. Animus, yes? You were using it to access a genetic memory file in Helix labeled Shea Cormac? You work for Upstergo Entertainment, remember? Any of this ringing a bell? Your session triggered something bad and it's affecting the whole building. We need to find your boss. You haven't forgotten your boss, have you? Melanie LeMay, zipper, chipper, overachiever? Here, take your communicator, check it if you get lost. Now let's get out of here. Follow me. Double time. This chaos is absolutely your fault, in case you're wondering. Everyone, just like we practiced in our safety drills. Everything is gonna be okay, guys. Stay. We repeat, this is not a test. What the hell is happening? A file labeled Shea Cormac was booby trapped with some kind of virus. Your job is to prevent things like this. We need to contain these genetic memories, then we can destroy them. No. Isolate them. I want to study these memories. But... With respect, Miss Lemay, this is not a request. You heard the man. Fine. I need to borrow your numbskull. That okay with you, Ms. Lemay? Hey there, this might seem a bit weird, but you're gonna work for contractors we hire to, you know, upgrade our security. Mr. Otto Berg and Ms. Violet DaCosta. Call me Violet. I have to go check on our people and prepare a statement for the press. Do whatever they tell you to do, okay? Go team! Technically, you're not responsible for this, but you're the one who let the virus out. So I think it's only fair you help me clean it up. Mr. Berg wants us to relive Shay's genetic memories. To do that, we need to access them from Helix. But the Helix is down. We'll have to reboot the main servers in the basement. Man, whoever designed this virus is a genius. Not only does it restrict our access to the cloud, it's adapted to fuck up the other operating systems that regulate building functions. Melanie, the elevators are out of commission. Are we stuck on this floor? Damn, yes. I'll get a repair crew on site ASAP. There's a working area server on this floor. I guess it'll have to do for now. Agent DaCosta, I want regular updates on your progress with Shay's genetic memories. Why? He's just a nobody as far as I can tell. If Shay Cormac is who I suspect he is, then this temporary setback may provide us with an unexpected reward. Proceed to the server room on this floor. Once you restore the server, I'll connect your Animus workstation back to Helix. In theory, if you align the beams to segments of the core, it should solve the problem. But here's where it gets tricky. You have to move the circles in such a way that each segment is powered by a beam. The keyword here is each. One beam and one beam only per core segment, okay? Once everything is lit up properly, the system will reboot. Got it? Give it a shot. Good job. This core wasn't too complex, but rebooting the advanced hardware in the rest of the building will require more work. The assassins would have you believe that Al-Mualim was a great mentor who became corrupted with greed, and that he schemed with the Templars to acquire an Apple of Eden. I see instead a shrewd and cunning leader, a man who used his best assassin, Al-Tair ibn Lahad, to eliminate his conspirators in order to keep the apple for himself, so that he could use it to enforce world peace. While it must be stated unequivocally that Al-Mualim was not a Templar, it is interesting to me that his vision of peace was more in line with Templar philosophy than assassin. In the past, both sides had the same goal, that of peace. Our only difference was how we chose to achieve it.
Had Al-Mualim not been killed by Altair and allowed to carry out his plan, perhaps we would not be fighting now. It was only after Altair reformed the Brotherhood with its new ideals of free will that the conflict truly escalated and spread across the planet. For if the so-called wise man of the mountain can see things from our point of view, surely the same can be said for other assassins. So, I'm not sure you're supposed to see that. Just, uh, you should just get back to your animus. With the servers back online, you could, in theory, restore your co-workers' workstations if you, you know, feel like being helpful. And you could, in theory, find some more digital goodies if you, you know, feel like being sneaky. Hey, one of your co-workers dropped his communicator by the elevator. If you see any tech lying around like that, grab him. There might be a clue as to who did this. Now that you have unlocked Shea Cormac's memories, we stand on the brink of a grand discovery. I know you must have questions about your new assignment, or about me. For now, all I will say is that Shea's story contains the answers. Shay will lead you to a greater understanding. Following the Great Purge of 2000, William Miles became the de facto leader of the Assassins. A cunning and ruthless strategist, he trained several agents who infiltrated Abstergo, including Clay Kazmarek and Lucy Stillman. In late 2012, I captured William Miles in Cairo and delivered him to Warren Vidic in Rome. Miles' son, Desmond, attacked Abstergo, killed Vidic and Master Templar Daniel Cross, he fled to a first civilization temple in New York. On December 21st, Desmond Miles was killed inside the precursor structure. The grieving William Miles went underground and left the Brotherhood in the hands of Gavin Banks. Banks led a small team across the globe, attempting to rebuild assassin cells. We have confirmed sightings in Kyoto, Moscow, and Paris. Miles resurfaced in late 2013, and we have confirmed his involvement in the infiltration of Abstergo Entertainment Montreal by the assassins Sean Hastings and Rebecca Crane. Both Miles and Banks remain at large. Agent Acosta has tasked the Akashic satellite Plexus to sweep the planet for traces of assassin activities. We have yet to locate them.
You know what authorized personnel only means, don't you? Latham Kenway remains a controversial figure for me. I have great respect for him. After all, he was the Grand Master of the Colonial Rite, charged with finding a precursor site. Haytham was cunning and ruthless, but he had a streak of emotional weakness that ultimately triggered his downfall. He lost his father when he was a child, and the British Grand Master Reginald Birch raised him to become a Templar Knight. Haytham eventually learned that his father, Edward, had been an assassin. That he chose to stay a Templar, rather than follow in his father's footsteps, indicates to me that he believed he was already on the right path. When Haytham discovered that Birch was the one who murdered his father, he and his sister killed him in revenge. I believe this was the beginning of his downfall. Templars kill for efficiency, not petty emotions. When he discovered that his son, Connor, was an assassin working against him in the colonies, the same emotional weakness stayed his blade. A pity Connor did not show him the same mercy.